Representative Katie Porter wanted to ask some questions about what's been taking place at the post office. Because chances are you might have noticed that it's taking a lot longer to get packages, to get your mail, or even to get your checks. And so she wants to know if the policies that Louis DeJoy, the Postmaster General, who was appointed by Donald Trump, has had an impact on the ability for the post office to perform its job, right? And getting you the packages that you need. So she had written this on Twitter. On time mail delivery has plummeted under postmaster Louis DeJoy, forcing veterans to wait longer for prescriptions, seniors to scramble to pay bills without their social security checks, and communities to feel less connected. Postmaster DeJoy needs to go. Now whether or not he will go is something that we'll discuss in just a moment. But before we do so, I wanna to turn to this video of Representative Katie Porter speaking to Melinda Melina Perez, she is the post office's deputy inspector general for auditing. The post office just went through an audit and you're gonna get some details about just how much the post office has been harmed by DeJoy's policies, let's watch. The audit found that by the spring of 2020, mail delivery was right around 92%. That dropped to 80% by the fall of 2020, and by January of 2021 was hovering at around 61%. When did Mr. DeJoy take over as postmaster, if you, do you know? At the summer of 2020. The summer of 2020, so June of 2020. And what happened after he took over? Did the rate of on-time mail delivery go up or down? Went down. And um, I'm a professor and I used to grade, grade, do a lot of grading. And 92% is, is considered widely like an A minus. Um, 80 is considered hanging on, hanging on to the lowest possible B. 60% is at best a D minus. The Postal Service delivers 48% of the world's mail is an institution, it is a civic treasure. And we let it get all the way, what you found is we let it get all the way to that D minus level. So you know she's serious when she's got that whiteboard ready. Um, and uh, to be sure, Louis DeJoy has been pretty destructive to the post office, implementing policies that lead to, first of all, banned late or additional trips to deliver mail. He has decommissioned hundreds of high speed mail sorting machines. He's also removed some mail collection boxes from the streets, and these changes have led to significant delays. And not to mention, he's got all sorts of business ties and conflicts of interest that play a role in this as well. I'll give you more details on that in just a second. But Jenk, why don't you jump in? So um, DeJoy's obviously got to go. There's uh, the issue of all the mail being delayed. And we used to have the best post office. I mean, we, we rightfully bragged about how great our uh, postal service was. And they would deliver and rain, <laughs> you know, uh, shine or, or uh, snow, sleet, etc. Boy, did I bungle that one. No, you nailed it. Okay, <laughs> anyways. And now they don't, now they don't. Why? The Republicans destroy everything in government. So they go, oh, government doesn't work. And they come in and they smash it to pieces and go, see, it doesn't work. Yeah, after you screwed it up, that chart was that she had on the whiteboard was perfect explanation of that. But there's a reason why they're doing it. Because it's not just because they wanna get rid of the post office and and have FedEx, UPS and other companies pick up the slack and make much more money, charges a lot more, and DeJoy himself has companies that compete with the post office, it's mental. It's absolutely insane, okay? So they're destroying it for on purpose for private interest, but also because of mail-in ballots. And in the last election, 25 to 50,000 ballots came in too late to be counted, because now the post office sucks under DeJoy, and that's on purpose. Mm -hmm. So in 2022, if they don't fix it, a lot more, now that it's deteriorated even more, a lot more will come in too late and not be counted. And now the mail-in ballots heavily favor Democrats. So if Biden doesn't fix this, he is a moron of epic proportions. And, in, and like the most pathetically weak leader we've ever had. So this is a layup. Now, 
How you get rid of DeJoy is difficult. That part, like the decision is a layup, the execution is difficult, but I, I can tell you how to do that in a minute. Right, exactly. Um, and, and look, before you do, because I do think that's important information, I just wanna kind of give everyone a little more background in regard to what Louis DeJoy has been up to, but more importantly, why it is that the post office has been under assault by Republicans, right? The biggest assault happened in 2006 under the Bush administration. So I wanna to go to graphic five here. The United States Postal Service has reported net losses of nearly $100 billion since 2007. Now that stems in part from 2006 legislation that required the agency pre-fund more than $120 billion in retiree health care and pension liabilities, a requirement that labor unions have called an unfair burden, not shared by other businesses and certainly not shared by government agencies. Remember, the post office is a government agency and it's expected to run like a business that pre-funds pensions for retirees. It's, it's absolutely insane. Now in regard to Louis DeJoy, what has he done specifically? Well, as Reuters had reported, the US Postal Service reports $4.9 billion in 2021 in net losses, right? They also write that the United States Postal Service implemented new service standards that slow some first class mail deliveries as part of efforts to reduce red ink. The new standards revised one to three day service standards to one to five days, impacting about 40% of first class mail. And as I mentioned, Postmaster Louis DeJoy in March announced a plan to cut $160 billion in predicted losses over the next decade. That means he's gonna fire a bunch of people. He says, we have years of inflicted damage to fix that will necessitate us taking some continued uncomfortable actions, DeJoy said. So it's abundantly clear that his first and foremost, like the first priority he has is to dismantle what's left of the post office. And also consider the fact that he has those conflicts of interest. There should be an investigation into whether or not under his leader leadership, these contracts are being given by the post office to the corporations or the companies that he has ties to. Okay, so now how do you get rid of them? First difficulty is that the president cannot directly fire the postmaster general. That's because we want that post to remain independent of day to day politics. Now, did Trump keep it independent? No, he put a guy who wants to destroy the postmaster office for his own profit into that position. But it is true that the president cannot fire the postmaster general. So that you, you can't undo that, it is what it is, okay? And you have to be fair in how you assess whether the president is taking aggressive action enough. Like if I, if I thought he could fire DeJoy and he wasn't, I'd go nuts. I'd be like, well, just fire him, what the hell's wrong with you? But he can't, right? Okay, so does that, for most Democrats, that's the end of the conversation. They're like, well, okay, that's good enough for a surrender, right? No, so who can fire DeJoy? Because obviously he can be fired like anybody else. Well, there's a nine person board and whoever is the president, that party gets to have five out of the nine seats. Now, here comes Democratic incompetence. Three of the Democratic seats are vacant. Obama tried to fill them, Senate Republicans blocked it because they actually care about their jobs and they care about their base. And they said, well, we don't care, we're gonna block everything, including the post office. Democrats, when Trump was in charge, was like couldn't block a goddamn thing. Trump packed that board with not only five Republicans when he was in charge, but he put he replaced a Democrat that was leaving with a a Democrat. Yeah, okay. someone who supports Trump, yeah, a, mo- a so-called moderate. Yeah, and who actively supports DeJoy. Exactly. So yes. now, almost everybody on the board is a supports DeJoy because Trump packed it and the Democrats have done nothing, nothing to fight back. They're just a grotesquely incompetent party. Okay, now here's what they could do. It's actually now relatively simple, you fill the three seats, you have another Democrat on there, and by the way, if you wanted, you could actually replace that Democrat too to be extra safe, right? If you needed to, um, and then a Trump-appointed Republican is going to step down in December. That's it. Now, if Biden doesn't do this, that's then you then he's the most he's the weakest, least intelligent president we've ever had. Okay, so then you appoint a Republican that is against the joy. 
There's a million Republicans who are never Trumpers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, super easy to find. If you can't pull that off, Trump did it. Trump's dead. Barely conscious, he's like one of the least intelligent people you've ever met in your life, mm. and and he got a Democrat to say he'll vote with Trump every time, right? So if Democrats can't do the same, nah, they're just they don't want to win. It, so you, it's next month. Let's see if Biden does it. But you know how Democrats are. I'd be pretty shocked if he did just elementary things to appoint those five guys, get rid of DeJoy, and bring the post office back to competence for both. The mail reasons and mail in ballot reasons. Look, there's there's one key difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And honestly, Joe Biden can be replaced with any other generic Democrat. Donald Trump, regardless of how much you might like him or hate him, doesn't matter. Okay, he's a steamroller. And if he wants something, doesn't care about what the laws are, doesn't care about what the rules are, he just goes for it. And no one stands in his way. Whereas Democrats, it's almost as if they Preemptively look for excuses for why they can't do things. And not almost, that's exactly what they yeah, do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. and, and part of the reason is, and, and other Republicans do this too, it's not just Trump. McConnell does a great job of steamrolling. Right. McConnell's well, a little more sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. And, and McConnell's part of the people who did this and protect the joy, etc. Why? Because corporate Republicans would love to destroy the government, and that's what they're doing here. And they want to privatize everything so their donors can make more money. And in the case of DeJoy, he is the donor. He's a Republican donor who runs these businesses. Um, Etc. So, but the Democrats, their donors tell them, no, 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 don't take any action. Hey, I got shares in FedEx, I got shares in UPS, I got this, I got that. You better not take any action. So, and if they even do anything slightly aggressive, their donors yell at them at the top of their lungs. And then guys like Biden, who are already like by nature weak, are like, oh, the donor yelled at me. I swear nothing will fundamentally change. I'll keep everything Trump kept in place. Look, he has. It's not even proving us wrong. I'm saying I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm saying basically he'd have, to, he'd have to be a moron not to fix this next month. But if he doesn't do it, then hey, man, it's a layup at this point. Yes, you can't fire DeJoy, but you can definitely do the board. By the way, if none of that worked for mysterious reasons, and, and you know, because all they're trying to do is find excuses, right? If you really wanted to do it, here's what you could do: you, whether it's DeJoy or any board member. Oh, hmm, let's look into your business interests. I, I, I bet we find something interesting there, right? And the minute you publicize a couple of things they've done wrong in business, because there's no way in the world that Joy didn't do things wrong in business. In fact, I think we covered that earlier uh, during the Trump era. And then you start to put pressure on, you say, okay, 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 I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I was gonna leave anyway, right? Mm. But that's hardball tactics I would do in one second flat that Biden would never do in a million years. But it doesn't matter, he doesn't need to do that. He could just replace the board members if he has a pulse. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.